Hello, welcome to Victor George Leather Goods YouTube. And today I've got an exciting video to share with you. Something that I've recently found that I think will help you revolutionize the way you make your holsters in your small one person shop or your small batch shop. This is a holster pattern uh, pack from edcleather.com. Uh, George Canfield and his crew of holster makers, designers, have made it so easy for you if you're a new holster maker on how to design a modern um, holster with all the safety features that uh, are required for um, carry of a firearm. As we make it um, from a small shop perspective, um, and then we're gonna design, or I'm sorry, then we're gonna build the final holster. This is an outside the waistband uh, Pancake Zero Cant style holster. And, uh, and I'm gonna take you through the entire review as I'm building this pattern pack for you. So if you're new to holster making, and you quite haven't uh, developed the experience yet to design your own, these will give you the foundation that you need um, or a basis of knowledge to build and design your own in the future. This is a great start for you. I'm super excited. Um, all I can say is hang on, let's do this, and you're gonna find out some details on this that are just gonna amaze you. All the safety features required of a modern day holsters are included in the design, which I'll break down individually. And uh, with 43 years of concealed carry, active duty carry, and on duty carry with the local sheriff's department, I believe I have a um, insider's perspective, so to speak, on what constitutes a quality firearm and holster carry. All right, so enough. Let's discuss some details off uh, the bench and uh, let's get this started. Back in 1956, Al Stolman designed this how to make holsters for the Tandy Corporation. Um, hobbyists and leather workers alike cut their teeth with this particular book. I love it and it's a piece of um, history in this game. But let's fast forward to 2023 and uh, EDC Leather has revolutionized the modern day holsters. So what they have is a pattern pack. In this case, it's for uh, Glock. It comes with five hard copies um, of various Glock models, the 17, 19, 26, 48, and 43. The design pattern is spot on what I've learned so far from making a few of these. I have yet to have any problems. And this kit comes with the five pattern and Herman Oak eight ounce leather, which is clicked and shipped to you with this package. This is a zero degree cant build. They do have eight degree and other models that I will feature on future videos. But this is the modern day um, pancake outside the waist pan band holster. And it has some features that are very important for a new holster maker to consider. The very first thing is uh, grip clearance or a full combat draw capability as it's called. So the user will grasp the firearm on, from the holster on his belt, his or her, pull the firearm out and there will be no shift in the hand to firearm grasp. That's very important. That is designed in. Second important feature is the magazine catch release cannot be under leather because you know what'll happen, that magazine will pop out when you don't want it. Third thing is rigidity at the throat. So this throat patch is part of the design. And what that does is it provides rigidity, doesn't uh, collapse on itself. There is no potential fold over of this front piece, which we all know is ripe for an accidental discharge. That is a safety feature designed because of that patch. You don't have to worry about it. Beautiful lines, um, very detailed, and we're going to build this and review it. And uh, that's it. 
Let's get started on the build and review of this uh, pattern pack from EDC Leather. And uh, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to decide out of the five patterns that I'm going to make it for the Glock 19 in this case. I'm going to pull my um, clicked eight ounce Herman Oak leather from the package, save this bag for later. And um, all right, so let's go ahead and get ready to build this. I will share throughout this video a lot of uh, information that I think is really valuable for you to know. For example, the first thing, if you don't want to buy the pattern pack, just buy, if you've got your own leather to cut, just buy the pattern itself. It's downloadable. It's uh, uh, a hard copy if you want it. I get these and then I have a laser printer that is capable of uh, printing cardstock. They highly encourage and recommend that you make many copies for your files um, because obviously once we get started, you're gonna cut this pattern apart and um, I'll show you what I do here in a little bit. At the very end of this video, I'm gonna give you my opinions as to price points and how it can be beneficial and how it can save you money and be more productive in your shop. All right, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna cut this pattern apart. So you have basically five pieces on here. You have the back piece that has the uh, um, sweat shield, the main body of the holster, you have the throat patch, and each ear on these dotted lines is your stitch trace for this particular model. All right, so I'm gonna cut this off camera and then we will uh, get started. So what I do is I cut out the, um, the original pattern into the five pieces, the main body, the back piece with the sweat shield, the throat latch, or throat patch, and uh, <clears throat> the ears for the stitch traces. That I cut out and then I make another copy and I take a plastic bag and I put all these pieces in, I file it, and anytime I need a Glock 19 kick zero, I will make it. A lot of times if I cut it from my own leather, this is really handy. Okay, so let's, um, let's just start with the blue gun as well. This is something else that you'll have to develop an inventory for depending on how many different firearm makes you wanna do. Uh, what I do personally is I have a dozen of my favorite guns um, and that's all I do. I, that's all I do is those dozen guns. There's too many great custom holster makers out there and I'll list a few at the end of this video for you as well. So buy these, EDC Leather has them, Makers uh, Leather Supply, Aaron out of Texas, uh, carry some, um, uh, blueguns.com. Just do an online search and you will be inundated. Okay, enough said about that. Now let's go ahead for the Glock 19, let's go ahead and pull this part of the pattern and take your click and ship eight ounce Herman leather. And if you'll notice, they cut theirs for the Glock 17 for example. It's longer, um, the 19 obviously is more compact. So we're gonna have to cut just this excess off and all I'm gonna do is gonna make sure that everything is aligned, all my ears and the top of the holster match up and I'm just gonna take this and trim it. Okay, I'm gonna cut that off and uh, then I'm going to transfer the um, shorter muzzle end to the back piece and uh, we'll get started with the build and I'll show you from that point on. So we went ahead and cut off the excess on the uh, leather provided for the shorter um, muzzle. So I cut these out. Now anytime I cut leather out, even though I've been cutting for years, remember you wanna split the ink line on the pattern and split the ink line on your uh, leather as well. The tolerances sometimes can be a little bit close. But anyway, I'll take a salon board if I do a, just a, you know, whatever. <laughs> if I'm off by a frog's hair, then, then just take your salon board and clean it up, get that 90 degree angle back, and uh, there's no harm in doing any of that. So just take your leather, and um, get it back to round. This doesn't remove much leather at all and uh, just cleans everything up. Okay, now um, that we have that, we're going to work on the front face 
and the patch. That's the first thing that I'm going to do. And now with this click and ship, um, you know, since it's been clicked out, everything lines up perfectly wherever that matches up with the top of the throat of the holster is where that patch is going to go. Now, when you get ready to sew this on there, we don't want glue all the way out on the edges. Um, that's very unprofessional and there's many ways to do that. And because we're not gonna be using a sewing machine on this, not everybody has one. So you can hand sew this and uh, be just as, um, if not better actually. But anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the um, throat um, reinforcement piece and I'm going to establish a 3 16th of an inch um, line for my stitches. And then I'm going to show you how I take the stitching iron and uh, eventually transfer the pattern of the stitch lines onto the main body so that way you don't glue beyond the stitch holes. There's many ways to do it. I'm going to show you now. So now we have our stitch line established at 3 16 of an inch from the edge. Um, we used a edger to take the top corner off just of the main body, not the top. And uh, now is a good opportunity if you want to, to go ahead and just lightly moisten, use your favorite um, um, edge goop and uh, make, make that happen and uh, that's a perfect time to do it. Now, because we're not using a sewing machine, this is sort of geared um, according to um, EDC leather for six stitches per inch. I've used four millimeter and five millimeter pricking irons. It's not a problem. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and establish on this case a five millimeter uh, pricking iron and uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of this, but uh, you know, not anything that, uh, that is super magic, just stay on the lines. Color in the lines, I always wondered why we were told that as we were younger, this is part of it. And then you take your number two, of course. Are we gonna get lucky? Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use the five mil here. Um, and because I don't quite have enough for a full five mil, I'll just use the four mil and nobody will be wiser. The five millimeters are always kind of hard to match up. So in this case, not too bad, everything's prepped. And um, let me show you a couple ways that you can go ahead and, and uh, do these holes. Now we have our stitch spacing um, on the patch that we did with our five millimeters. And now you can do one of a couple things. You can Dremel drill press these holes out. It's never a problem. Or you can use an awl and a yoga block is what I use anyway. And then it's nothing more than I, I hold my finger across like that and then that way I don't do any, I can aim it a little bit better. And just press it through at the angle of the pricking iron. It's about a 45 degree angle. And then just do your holes and prep that. And that should be all set for the next step. All right, we went ahead and awled or Dremel drill pressed the holes on the um, uh, patch. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer that to the holster pattern itself. And again, um, all these lines line up very nicely because of the clicked pieces. So I'm just going to hold it there. And then I'm just going to take a, um, a little awl. And I'm just going to give myself about every other 
stitch hole a little mark. And what this is actually doing is it's giving me the glue line location on the face of the holster. So, I don't know, can you see that? Anyway, where all these little uh, dot indicators are, that's where we're gonna scratch up. We're gonna scratch the face of the leather for preparation for gluing. And um, that way, when you do glue the item, you don't go past the stitch marks and then you apply your glue very cleanly and um, kind of like you're painting it on there, don't slop it on there. And then uh, it'll, you'll have a nice um, match. Now we're going to glue both sides. Use your uh, contact cement, Urania, water-based, uh, whatever works for you. And um, let's go ahead and glue that together. And then I will sew this together. So when I come back, this will be glued and sewn. So what I'm doing is basically relaxing uh, and sewing the patch on. Again, take your time, enjoy the process and make sure each stitch is pulled snug and uh, evenly each time. Uh, I use one odd thread. You can use Ritza, Main Thread Company, and if you live anywhere near a uh, tech bait and tackle shop that has braided micron fishing line, check that out. <laughs> Good stuff. Anyway, I use uh, C.S. Osborne uh, egg eye um, harness needles. They're blunt at the tip. Uh, you can use um, John James needles. I wouldn't buy anything else. They'll break. Actually, 40 plus years ago, I bought very many different sized C.S. Osborne needles, and they have lasted this long. They will bend a little bit, kind of get arthritic like my finger, And uh, but these are wonderful. I have my cup of coffee here. Don't judge me because I put whipping cream in my coffee. And let's finish this. So we sewed the patch on, and um, if you'll notice, it's a little bit damp. And I, I, I like working with uh, just slightly moistened leather, not cased or anything to that degree. To me, it makes everything that I do a little bit crisper. For example, once the patch is sewn on, and by the way, um, the patch is not only for um, throat strength, rigidity, but it's a great place for a maker's mark. It's a great place for basket weave, um, an exotic overlay. Whatever you want to do, that's fine with me, of course. And then my um, convex head hammer on a piece of glass or marble. This one happens to be um, seven eighths thick glass. And then just tap your stitches flat. That basically sets your stitches and looks a lot better. I use a little bit of moisture. It helps seat them into the leather. And uh, the same thing on the back. Another, another nice thing about glass or marble like this, you won't transfer any uh, cut marks from your cutting boards. So. Okay, don't even feel the threads. And this is good to go. Went ahead and, and uh, moistened and burnished. You can use a Sharpie pen shaft. Um, you know, these things are great for all kinds of things. So anyway, now that's done. So we went ahead and uh, completed the throat patch on the holster face here. And um, if you'll notice, um, one thing that I really like to do is on a plain holster, I'll take my wing dividers and I'll establish um, a border on each side of the, um, the stitch line. And I just use my wing dividers. I soften the tips a little bit with thousand grit sandpaper. And then that way it gives you a nice little um, groove instead of cutting into the leather with the sharp points. All right, just a small little touch. Um, until you get better tools, you can always uh, adapt. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna establish our stitch traces or our stitch lines for the holster itself. Now we're gonna take the main 
front face pattern piece, and then we're gonna cut out the ears. So on this dashed line, that's what you're gonna cut out, and this is, this is how it's going to come out. So very important, if you're using the clicked leather as part of this pattern pack from EDC Leather, you don't have to worry about it. it. It's eight ounces and beautiful. But if you're cutting it from your own leather and let's say it's nine ounce, maybe a little thicker, instead of actually cutting directly, splitting that dash line, am I in there? Yeah, splitting that dash line, just take it on the outside of that, uh, of that line and that'll give you a little bit extra relief for the heavier weight leather. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place these ears on to the holster like this, and I'm gonna match everything up, and you can see how nicely these pattern pieces match up. They definitely put a little bit of engineering time into these things. So I'm just going to take my awl, Establishing my stitch line with an awl, and then I just take a pen because we're gonna punch, connect, and cut this um, um, piece here. Unless, of course, you have the appropriate size punch, it's a lot easier. But anyway, we're gonna do that, and uh, we're gonna replicate the same thing on the other side here. I've already established this outside or this inside stitch line, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my 3 16th, my 3 16th inch wing divider, and from the bottom of the stitch line there, I am going to follow around the ear. Slow down, George. And I'm gonna connect where that stitch line is. There it is barely see it and of course I need to make sure that I have this exactly where I want it so I will mark that and uh, I'll give you the the appropriate measurements for that slot I just don't have it in front of me give me a second I'll make sure that happens on the other ear as well we're gonna do the outside ear stitch line And that's it right there. All right, so we are now ready to employ our five mil, four mil, six stitches per inch um, indicators, or I'm sorry, uh, pricking irons. So what you wanna do is when you start that, is you wanna start the pricking iron in this area right here, and then you're gonna do your pricking iron all the way around here directly on the line. And the reason you start here is because two things. If you're sewing it on a machine, that's usually where you do all your back tack and eventually the belt will hide that area. Also, if you're doing it by pricking iron, you know, you might come up a little bit shy and you might have to do some budging and that's a good place to hide that on both sides, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and take my pricking irons and I'm going to establish uh, my stitch holes. Okay, the slot dimensions based on the experts at EDC are 5 16 wide by 1 and 9 16 um, tall for a one and a half inch slot punch. It's a perfect size. So if you're gonna order a punch, say from Texas Custom Dies, those would be the dimensions. It's wonderful. I went ahead and put my five millimeter stitch uh, marks on the face of the holster in preparation for further hand sewing. And uh, one quick little thing is, is I like the five mil. Um, there are times where the five mil may not necessarily match. If you'll see that, it may not match when I got to here. So I just take my four mil and drop it in there and then continue back with the five. Once that's sewn, Nobody but yourself would know that that's done that way, okay? So just take that into consideration and uh, let's go ahead and press on to the next stage. Okay, we did just a couple more things on the front face of the holster in preparation for final glue up 
and um, assembly and molding and dyeing and all those other steps that we're gonna show you. So the first thing that I do is on the face, in between the stitch lines, I edge from stitch line to stitch line and I do it on the inside as well. And I don't know if you can see that, but I used um, some edge um, burnishing solution and uh, I did that also on the top portion of it, basically between stitch lines. That should have already been edged earlier. And uh, as you are aware that I have an obsession with crease lines, I went ahead and creased the bottom of the holster here about 1 16th of an inch. To me, it just dresses up a plain edge. All right, so that is prepped. We're going to cut the slots later once it's glued together. Um, and uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed that that goes well. And now, the back piece. So now we have the back piece, all right? And I put it on so the flesh side is up. The inside. I go ahead and take my ears, left and right, and um, I mark my glue line. If you'll notice here, this is where that line goes. You know, so I used a pen, use your um, awl and scribe your lines. Again, glue line. Now, in between these lines here, the stitch lines, that's where you're gonna edge. So I'm just gonna go, am I in there? I'm just gonna go there. And then I put little tiny tick marks um, on the inside or on the edge of that so that I can see exactly where I need to um, where I need to do it. And then obviously we're going to to um, burn, burnish that edge. Now on the top part of the holster, we're going to do the same thing. So from the stitch line to right here where it connects to the back of the holster, we're going to edge this as well. And again, I, I sprayed moisten it a little bit. And anytime you're dealing with slightly moist leather, you have to make sure that your watch doesn't lay on it, your fingernails are trimmed because, you know, moist leather will basically capture any marks. And now as I get up here to the stitch line, I'm just gonna fade off a little bit. I'm gonna do the same thing on the front. I've given myself my little index line so that I know where to, to edge the grain side. And of course, I will be establishing myself a little 1 16th inch decorative wing divider line out there. Lord knows I can't leave anything plain, even if it is a crease line. All right, so now that we edge that, I'm gonna go ahead and use my um, uh, edge burnishing solutions. And I'll be honest with you, there's two of them that I, that I like. The first one is edge, or I'm sorry, Martin's Mix Edge Solution. Um, super great product, check them out. And the other one is the Slicking Solution by Hagels. All right, so now we are prepped. I'm off camera. I'm going to go ahead and edge and burnish the uh, back piece of the holster. And then we're ready for um, glue up. I'll show you that and we'll press on. So we finished the, uh, the back panel and um, went ahead and slicked the bottom edge, slicked the... Uh, sweat shield area here basically according to our dimensions and of course I had to do a flesh side crease line as well and um, good opportunity at the base here to put your made in Arizona made <laughs> made wherever USA of course and um, then I did a 1 16th inch decorative line um, all the way around there these are the little details that when it's finally done um, you know, they're little things that you'll notice. So take your time and enjoy the process. All right, we are now ready for glue up. So I went ahead and scratched. This Herman Oak is such tight grain on the flesh side. Um, I went ahead and roughed up both the glue areas. Same here on the back panel. And uh, we are ready to glue it up. I will say one 
little thing about glue up is number one, again, don't glop it on there. Have a nice light even coat. Um, a lot of times two light even coats is better and stronger. Stay inside the line. Don't have glue inside your holster. Paint it on there. Don't glob it on there. All right, so I think we are set. I will glue it up and we'll press it together and uh, get ready to sew it and mold it and dye it and finish it. I'm gonna show you a little something that I like to do occasionally if I'm not punching a bunch of holes and uh, that is to use my drill press and a um, hole punch. Now, on these hole punches, I make sure that they're very sharp and um, let's see if I can get this all in frame. But anyway, this is, this is what I do. And the nice thing about this is if you do it quickly enough, um, it'll burnish the inside of the hole without burning it. But if you hold it in there too long, you're gonna burn it. And uh, so it is a critically um, be careful step. All right. So I just do it like this. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. And if you'll notice the ins, oop, here we go. If you'll notice the inside of the hole is just burnished, not burnt. And because that was done very quickly, and I will do the next one. Okay, don't sit around there too long. That is a perfect hole. Um, we are going to, once this is, once this is glued together, then we're going to um, cut that out and clean it up and we'll show you how to do that. Just something you can do. My shoulders are real bad and uh, this helps me.